Yeah. So, um, welcome to this class, guys. This is uh, Math 3702, um, class 4 of 8. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to do the source of finance question from the Mac 3702 ECP assignment 2. Okay, so um, I share that with you and I'll open up just now and then we will work through it. But what I was saying is that, um, is that by the end of this week, by Friday, we're going to be by class 6 of 8. Okay, so um, we covered WAC. Um, we covered WAC over two sessions. What do we do? And then we, um, and then tonight we doing source of finance. Tomorrow we're going to do capital budgeting. And then on Friday, we, I think we're doing working capital. I'm going to just check. Okay, then next week we're going to do, let's say we do working capital on Friday. The next week we're going to do financial analysis and valuations. So then all the major topics are covered. I don't cover every single topic. I cover all the major topics. Okay, so those are all the major topics. So by the end of Friday, so basically from this weekend, you can start planning your exam preparation, okay? So for your exam preparation, you want to set up the major topics, I'll show you later, and then the number of questions. So let's say you're going to cover three questions. So like I said, I am trying to get to at least three, but ideally five. If you can do more than five and you're doing it properly, that's totally okay. But don't go to question six if you are still uncertain. You must do question six because you just want to become a bit better, not because you still don't know what you did in the last five. Okay, so remember, if you still don't know, um, you're still really struggling. Question six, question seven is not really going to help because fundamentally something is not right. So let's say you're doing three questions. So the first two questions you do um, together or close by, and then the third question you must leave for some time, a week later or so. So with the first two questions, so let's say, um, so let's say you're doing a question today and a question tomorrow, and it's both whack. Okay, so you're doing whack today and you're doing whack um, tomorrow. Then um, when you do question one, like I said, uh, um, like I explained in the other video, that you answer the question as you need to answer the question, then you mark yourself. So when you mark yourself, you identify two things, what you got right, what you got wrong. For the items you got right, you need to identify two things. One, did you get it right because you actually knew it, or did you get it right by chance? If you got it right, if you actually knew it, you're okay with it. If you got it right by chance, you might just try to see how, um, why did you get it right by chance and try to make sure Next time you can get it right because you actually know it. So generally when you get something right by chance, you generally know it, just that you weren't 100% certain. There were just like one or two things you needed to tweak to make sure you fully get, um, grasp it. Okay, so then that part is out, out of the way. Now for the things that you didn't get right, the things that you got wrong, there's two questions you must be able to answer. Number one, where did you go wrong? And number two, why did you go wrong? Okay, so you want to identify where in the process you went wrong, and then why did you go wrong at that point, at that, at, that, at, that, at that place? So then you want to fix it right there and then. So at the end of all of that, then you need to um, take another 15 minutes or you don't, you don't have to do it immediately, but you need to do it before you do question two is to answer the question, what did I learn? You need to ask yourself a question, what did I learn? And then try to answer it, okay? So that is critical. If you want to do, if you want to go even further, if you want to be even more, um, if you want to like, a, like go really further, then you can ask what if questions. Because by asking what if questions, then you would be able to basically, um, you'll basically cover everything in a few question papers. Okay, so for example, like the, the um, like the, 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 like with ordinary, under WAC for ordinary share capital, when you want to calculate the cost of equity for ordinary share capital, there are three methods. Perhaps, um, so let's say the question you covered um, asked you to calculate it in terms of the dividend growth model, but you know you can calculate it in terms of CAPM and you can calculate it in terms of the bond yield plus risk premium. So at the end of the question, you want to ask yourself, what if they didn't ask me 
What if it wasn't dividend growth? What if it was capping? What then? So then you just want to identify what you need, um, how you um, how you go about calculating it, and so forth. So if you see the way I'm telling you how to study, it takes a lot of time. But at the end of it, when you're done, you can feel. You're not just gonna know. You're gonna feel that you know your stuff. Okay. So that is basically what you want to do. Now let's say you go. Tomorrow comes and you do a, your second whack question. So when you do your second whack question, before you do your second whack question, you want to remind yourself of the mistakes you made and how you fixed it. Okay, so you want to remind, so it must be in the top of your mind of how you fixed it. And then I also like to say, you don't have to do this, but it's generally, I, I, I tend to find it beneficial. And that is before you start the topic, just take about five to 10 minutes to, give, to tell yourself a high level overview of the topic. What are the key issues of the topic? So that when you go in and start it, your brain is aware of what the key issues are. Okay, so that's important. Now, when you do question two and you're done with question two, then you must go again through that same process. And that is mark yourself, identify what is right, identify what is wrong. For the items that are right, identify if you got it right because you actually knew it or you got it right by chance and you fix the ones you got right by chance. For the items that you got um, wrong, you need to answer two questions. Where did I go wrong and why did I go wrong and fix it right there? Okay, so remember in question one, you may be sitting with your textbook, you may be sitting with the notes, you may be sitting with the video. Like for example, like some of my students, they would take the same question and they would work through it while playing the recording in the background. Okay, so then they work through, they listen to how I read the scenario and they read through the question and they try to figure out. That's like some, some of the students today, they have been working through. Um, so you're working with what you call it, working with some material, working with um, the textbook or some notes. But when you come to question two, you must reduce the amount. When you come to question three, even less until you can work fully from your, your mind, right? So now when you are doing question, once you are done a marking, um, the next thing that you need to do is to do a comparison. So what was similar between WAC question one and WAC question two? What was different between WAC question one and WAC question two? Um, like I generally say, look at three things how they ask the required, and generally in, in um, financial management, the required is straightforward. If you look at the WAC question in question one and the WAC question in question two, it will be exactly the same. But just take a few minutes just to see if the, if the required was asked the same. Okay, so that's the one. The second is to just see how the scenario was presented. When I say how the scenario was presented, it is how did they give the information? So a typical example for WAC would be, um, the, 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 the instruments, the source of finance may have been presented in terms of a balance sheet or it have just been in, in notes. Okay, so there's no balance sheet and it's just basically in the additional information or in the, in the notes to whatever they are presenting. So those are different ways of presenting the information. Another way of presenting information, they can give you each individual um, debt instrument or they could say total debt is 100 million, 50% is debentures, 20% is bonds, and the remaining is long-term loans. So it's those type of small things that you want to be able to identify. So that is what I, when I talk about how they present the information in, in the scenario. And then lastly, it is actually in terms of the actual answer, right? Um, in um, what, uh, for the WAC question, like, like I said, for, for ordinary share capital, was it dividend growth model, was it CAPIM? If it was both dividend growth model, you must know that you need to start thinking about CAPIM. If, if, if they covered CAPIM in the one and dividend growth in the other one, then okay, you're at least feeling comfortable that you covered both. But if you didn't, you just need to at least think about it. Okay, so it's those type of, it's those type of stuff that will expand your mind as opposed to just running through questions. Because what is the big difference? Here's the big difference. When you are running through questions, you are only tending to learn what that question covered. 
but when you doing the process or following the process I'm telling you to follow, or not I'm telling you, I'm suggesting you to follow, you are asking the questions. So you are making an effort to tell your brain that they need to be critical, they need to start thinking, and then your brain will start making the necessary connections, and you, you, you will then be able to identify gaps and all of those type of stuff, and then you can fix up or um, you can fix up the gaps. But when you are just running through questions, you're not sometimes you just you're just running through questions and you're not taking the time to sit back and just ask you the simple question: what did I learn? What's actually happening over here? Is there another way? Um, what else could they have asked me? So if you're not doing that, you are just training your brain to do what is what whatever you're seeing, but you're not training your brain to um, to actually think a little bit. And that is why this approach works so well, because you are training yourself to think. So that when when you come to an exam and it's a be a complete new exam, you 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 have already trained your brain to think. So you will be able to navigate whatever it is given. Okay, so that's very important. And then don't forget, when once you're done with the comparison, you need to ask yourself again, what did I learn? And now you want to combine what you learned in question one and in question two. And that's how you start improving your understanding. And that's why you can see that um, it, it, to get to 100, to do 10 questions is highly unlikely because the level of depth that you're going in for each question, okay? And like I said, if you want to go a little bit further, you ask yourself a what if question. Then um, they need, this question asks for ordinary share capital cost of equity using dividend growth, but they could have asked CAPIM. Then you ask yourself, okay, if it was CAPIM, what would I need? How would I go about calculating it? It's things like that. A typical one would be for dividend growth model. They can either give you the growth, um, the growth rate or you must be able, able to calculate the growth rate. So if they, if they give you the growth rate, then you must ask yourself, what if I was not given the growth rate? Then how do I get it? That means you're gonna have to calculate it. So automatically the next question come, how do I calculate growth rate? And then automatically you're gonna learn that there are three methods to calculate growth method. And then you're gonna be able to identify the various three methods. So those are the stuff that you want to do. There's no need to run through a thousand questions. Yes, it's okay if you want to run through a thousand questions. If you want to do question banks, I know a lot of people do the question bank and stuff like that. Just know the question bank is the past papers. Okay, just that they, it's not a full past paper. They took the best whack questions and they put in the question bank. They took the best capital budgeting questions and they put it in the question bank. So the question bank that you have, it's all past papers, just not in its full. It just they took a selected topic from each paper and they chucked it into the question bank. So the question bank is totally fine. So you can use that as your revision, but there's no need to do the entire question bank. If you can do the entire question bank by following the approach, you don't have to do the approach 100%, but even just a 20% of it, it will be much better than completing the entire question bank without doing any analysis. Okay, so that's very important. Um, and that will help you to be successful in the exam. I don't want to say you're going to be successful, but I can almost say you will be because of the, um, the, the, the success rate of the students that um, most of them, almost all of them were successful, right? So um, the approach does work. It's not my approach. It's not copyright to me. I, I didn't come up with the approach. It's not patent. It's not copyright. It's not my approach. It is just basically when I was a student, what worked for me. And I know I wasn't the best of students. I was a struggling student. So um, I know what worked for me. And I saw what worked for my friends as well as other, other peers around me that did really well. And I saw what they did how they go about doing stuff and it works. So I implemented some of it. I wasn't as diligent as those other people, but whatever I implemented, it worked. So I know what works <clears throat> based on that and also based on um, tutoring for the past few years. So um, try to implement it. I know it's difficult. My experience with um, 
with um, the distant learning, like the UNISA, um, those that go through the UNISA, and I understand why, because you, you're going through the UNISA, it's distance learning, right? You, you're not really interacting with the lecturers and so forth. So the only thing, the only way you're really interacting with the lecturers is via the TAT letters you receive. So you think whatever is in that TAT letter needs to be covered. And only after you cover everything in that TAT letter, you feel comfortable and satisfied and okay. But so I get that because there's no, there's not an interaction you can go ask the, the lecturer. Must I cover everything? Like for example, the UCT, they gave us every week three to five tutorials, but they told you there's no need to do three to five or there's no need to do all of them. You must at least do the one you need to, the one that is required and one or two others, but it wasn't a necessity to do everything. And they told you that, but they said, why are they giving this amount? Because some people work more than others. And there's obviously different scenarios I want to bring across, but there's no need to do everything because you can do the, the you can do just do one or two or three. And if you do it properly, it will be okay. So that's how we knew. But if I was also distance learning, I'd also think that to be successful, I must do every question that is given to me. There's no need for that. So just be aware that don't let that put you under stress. So work smartly and work the better way and you will be um, successful. On that, before we go into the question, so when you set up, try to have a dedicated time when you study and try to have a dedicated amount of time that you also study. So ideally, because you're in the last few um, weeks, you probably want to do at least 90 minutes a day. Most of you are working, so at least 90 minutes a day. Um, if not, then 60 minutes as a, at a bare minimum, right? Uh, but uh, ideally 90 minutes. And then on days you're not working like weekend, then you try to do um, two to three 90 minute sessions. And the way to manage a 90 minute, make sure you know exactly what the outcome, what, what would make that session successful. So like I was explaining to the CTA students at our tutor that, um, you must not decide today what you're going to do today. You must at least decide the day before the time. So you must know today what you're going to be doing tomorrow. So tonight, you must know what you're going to be doing tomorrow. You must know what time you're also going to be doing it tomorrow, right? So for example, um, let's say you're going to do WAC tomorrow. So you already select the WAC question tonight. You know what you're going to be doing tomorrow. And then what you need to also um sort out tonight when you set up or the, the, um, the day before when you identify what you're going to do the next day, you need to identify what you're going to study, pick up the question, I take out the question and the time, right? So let's say you're going to start at eight o'clock, eight till 9.30, that's your study time. So now you go and study that web question that you have decided already the night before, okay? So this, and then now this is the important aspect. You need to tell yourself or write down how you're going to know if the, if the session was successful. Firstly, you're able to feel if the session was successful, okay? Um, but you also have to write it down what will make the session successful. So you might say that at the end of the session, I want to be able to answer the full WAC question and I want to at least get um, eighty percent right, and I want to um, and I want to identify what I got wrong and fix that up. So whatever. So you just need to exactly know what a success a successful session will look like. Like I said, you will be able to feel it if you were if the session was fruitful or not. But also do that exercise where you want to know what would make the session successful. Now in the 90 minutes, what I explained to you, you can, um, so you limit your mark, your question to about 20 marks. Okay, so generally like a WAC capital budgeting in between 15 and 25. So you only do that question. You don't go do the full exam paper, nor do you do half of the exam paper. It does not mean that you must write 100 marks in three hours, that when you are revising, you must do 50 marks in 90 minutes, no. When you do, when you come to the revision side, then you must write under time pressure. But now that 90 minutes, no need to do 50 marks. In that 90 minutes, you do 
one question of 15 to 25 marks, whatever the WAC mark is. So generally it's between 15 and 25 marks. So, so in that first, um, in that 90 minutes, you want to do that. So let's say you say um, in the first 45 to 60 minutes, you're going to answer the question. In the next 30 minutes, you're going to mark and, and follow the process like I explained. And you want to make sure that in that session, you are good to go. So that is basically how you're going to, um, how you're going to become good at it. And you, you focus on the big topics, WAC, capital budgeting, valuations. Um, those are the four big topics, WAC, capital budgeting, valuations, right? Those are the four big three, and then maybe financial analysis. So those are the four big topics. Then the other uh, medium topics. So when I say medium, it doesn't always come in, but if it does come in, it is quite big. And that is um, source of finance and working capital. So if source of finance come in, it's between 10 and 15 marks. If capital, if whack, I mean, if working capital come in, then it's a between 10 and 20 marks. So then, uh, but you first focus on things that normally come in, whack, capital budgeting, financial analysis, valuations. The chance of valuations not being in the question is slim, because valuation is like one of the big topics of financial management. So just be aware of that, okay? So um, take note, you need to start planning towards that, um, that, that final exam. Um, I've uploaded um, the past, I've uploaded the um, the. So if I'm calling semester one, but there's no, there's no there's no real semester one and semester two this year. But just for ease of reference, I say semester one. So for semester one, um, I've uploaded those videos. I've uploaded the free videos as well. There's a WAC and a capital budgeting free video, and I think both is from a, a Math three seven two final exam. And then I've uploaded the. Um, I've uploaded um, something else. Oh, I've uploaded the revision classes of um, of last or of semester one as well. Okay, so just be aware of that. And then tomorrow I'll upload this and I think I've uploaded the other videos already. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch over into, um, into the scenario of the ECP assignment and then we will work through it. Okay, so <clears throat> so this was the assignment we did through the whole scenario and stuff. What am I doing? Um, yeah, you can see that gave us a history of dividends. So that was to help, to help to calculate the growth rate of dividends. We did that in the WAC, so you can go through all of those. So remember what happened over here? In this scenario, they were... Um, they, they need 800,000 Rand in order to do something. I can't remember some project they want to start and they need 800,000 Rand, okay? So they are telling us over here that TSL aims to maintain debt equity ratio of one to one going forward based on book value. They say to service the new blockchain technology, um, TSL is planning to buy new high-tech coding infrastructure. That's what they do. They want to do, they want to buy new high-tech coding infrastructure at a cost of 800,000 Rand at the start of the new financial year. The company will use this infrastructure for five years and then scrap it. <coughs> so here they can ask you like a capital budgeting question, but this is what we want to do now from five to six, right? Um, from 0.5 and 0.6, the following options are available to finance the new initiative. So the required over here is part A. They say determine how the new coding infrastructure should be financed, considering the funding options available to, C to TSL, as well as the current capital structure on 31 May 2021, using book values. Okay, so that's what we're going to answer now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up uh, Google Sheets. 
and then we can answer this. <clears throat> and then before we answer it, I'm gonna give you a high level overview of, of, uh, what, of what now? I'm gonna give you a high level overview of source of finance. Okay, so I'm gonna do part A now. So this is part A, this was part B. Okay, so when it comes to source of finance, so <clears throat> So basically, a company, they have some idea that they want to implement, right? They have some project that they want to implement, and they would need finance to obtain it, right? So remember, your long-term source of finance, or basically just finance in general, your, your source of finance in general is one of two things. It's either debt or equity. So generally, the question could be whether you should go with debt or whether you should go with equity. That is the question of source of finance. So the question is, what drives the decision? So the decision that drives whether they go with, um, with, um, with debt or equity is basically, number one, you need to identify what is the company's current capital structure and what is their target capital structure. Remember the definition of, of target capital structure is just basically, so target capital structure is the same thing as your optimal capital structure, just, just using different words. Okay, so target and optimal is the same thing. So what is your target capital structure or what is your optimal capital structure? It is the capital structure. It is the balance of debt and equity that will result in WAC being at its lowest. So your target capital structure or your optimal capital structure is that combination of debt and equity that will cause WAC to be at its lowest. Now there's no art, there's no science in how to get to that. Every, um, every company will have to work it out because it depends on the current interest rates. It depends on the, the, um, how investors, debt investors and equity investors um, um, perceive the company to be in terms of risk profile and growth opportunities and all of those type of stuff. So that is why there's no um, signs to it. Okay. So in theory, in theory, and also for our purposes, when I say our purposes, um, from an academic point of view, we assume that every company have a target capital structure or an optimal capital structure. And we assume that the company knows what it is, okay? So when we have a source of finance question, we need to ask ourselves, what is the current capital structure and what is the target capital structure? So in this scenario, we know the target capital structure is equity to debt is one is to one, okay? Using book value, very important. In this question, they say using book value. In another question, they could say using um, market value. So just be aware of that. So it's generally based on market value, but in this question, they're telling us use book value. So we need to identify what is the current capital structure and then move it to one is to one. Okay, so that is basically, um, that's the first thing you need to identify. The second thing that drives this also would be the, um, the structure of the company. So the business structure. So you have a look at 
its operational structure as well as its debt structure. So if the company have high fixed costs, then you don't um, relative to total cost. So if fixed cost is high relative to total cost, then you don't want too much debt because um, with debt comes interest and interest is a fixed cost. Okay, so by taking on more debt, it means you're going to have more fixed costs and that will put the business under more pressure and strain. Okay, so that's important to take note. You also look at the companies, the type of business that it run, is it cyclical, is it more stable and so forth. So for example, like for a construction company, in winter it's generally low, in summer it's generally high, or when there's an economic boom, then there's a lot of, infra um, there's a lot of investment in infrastructure. So, um, so construction companies do well, but in a recession, many people don't spend that much or companies, government don't spend that much on, on infrastructure, so then they suffer. Okay, so those type of things. We as a shop right and a checkers, whether it is a boom or whether it is a, a recession, you still need your groceries. But for them, when there's a boom, there may not be an over increase because people's not gonna people's gonna take the extra money and spend on luxury goods, not on your day-to-day -day stuff, right? They'll just buy what is what is necessary. So things like that you have a look at. Okay. But that is more on a CTA level. Okay. So I'm not gonna go into detail. So but basically it all comes down to debt versus equity. And you choose based on current capital structure versus target capital structure. Um, in CTA, you go into a, a lot more detail, um, but I'm not going to get into those kind of nitty-gritties when you get to CTA next year, if you're doing it, and then um, you can, you, you will learn about that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to set up. So this is a, this is generally a big source of finance question for 3702. In CTA, um, you need all the um, um, test a big question in CTA on source of finance and like other universities like WITS, um, what else, WITS, UCT, even Psyche final exams. I mean, like there's like a question on, on source of finance and like 50, 100 marks. Okay, so it can be big. Um, but for our purposes, this is a big um, source of finance question for MAC 3702 um, level. Okay, so how do we go about doing this question? So let's go back to the scenario. So they're saying determine how the new coding infrastructure should be financed, considering the funding options available, as well as a current capital structure. Okay, so we need to have a look. What is the current capital structure? So the current capital structure equity is one, whatever that number is. And then our debt is made up of preference shares and, um, and long-term loan. Okay, so it is not exactly one is to one. Okay, so I'll take this call. Hello. Hello, am I speaking to? Not happened over there. Um, so, so we will have to have a look what is one is to one. Okay, but we'll get to that now. Now, now we must have a look at point five because this is what they're telling us what we can raise. So remember, the whole idea is we going to we need an extra eight hundred thousand rand. Why do we need an extra eight hundred thousand rand? Um, because we need this money for this infrastructure, this tech coding infrastructure, okay? So be aware of that. So the question is, how should we obtain the 800,000 Rand? Should it all be equity? Should it all be debt? Should it be a combination of equity? Should it be, uh, um, should it be a combination of equity and debt? And if it is a combination of equity and debt, how much equity, how much debt? So how do we get to that? How do we know how this 800,000 Rand must be funded? So this 800,000 Rand, how are we gonna fund it? Is basically comparing the current capital structure versus the target capital structure. Okay, so just be, just take note of that. So let's have a look. <clears throat> so let's see.
Okay, so let's have a look at point number five. So they say the following options are available to finance the new initiative. What's the new initiative? The 800,000 rand. New ordinary shares can be issued. Retained earnings cannot be utilized. I'll explain this just now. Okay, so it's very important to pick that up. So when we're dealing with ordinary share capital using book value, it's very important to identify what the questions say about the retained earnings. Should you include the retained earnings or should you not include the retained earnings? So here they're telling us retained earnings cannot be utilized. So when we look at ordinary share capital, we only take the 500,000 rand into account. We don't take the 1120, I mean the 1220. If they said retained earnings can be utilized, then we use the 1220 because that includes um, retained earnings. But when they say retained earnings can't be utilized, you must take a number excluding retained earnings. So that is only the 500,000. This is only applicable when you are using book value. Okay, so that's important. When you're using market value, you don't have to worry about those stuff. Okay, so there they're telling us that um, new ordinary shares can be issued, but the retained earnings cannot be utilized. So what they are, so, okay, just, so just be aware of that, okay? They say a maximum of 4,000 additional 15% preference shares of 100 Rand each can be issued. A maximum of 4,000 additional 15% preference shares of 100 Rand each can be issued. So you can't issue more than 4,000. They say a loan from crypto bank of 200,000 Rand at prime plus 800 basis points a top-up loan from FNB Bank of 50,000 Rand at the same rate, okay? So they say the loans can only be taken at the total amount as made available by the bank. Okay, so that's very, very important to take note over here. You have to take the total amount. So for example, if you want FNB, you must take 50,000 Rand. If you want Crypto Bank, you must take 200,000. You can't take less than 200,000, okay? So just be aware of that. Okay, they're saying the South African Income Tax Act stipulates um, a company tax rate of 28% and an allowance on new coding infrastructure of 20%. The prime lending rate currently 10.5 and is expected to stay unchanged. The required rate of return for preference shares is 11%. Okay, I just want to see something quickly. What is not 100% clear, I'm trying to find that over here. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm looking for this. Okay, so they say for this part, assume preference shares are redeemable and therefore categorized as debt. I was looking for that because I couldn't tell from the scenario whether preference shares is debt or equity. They have to tell you, somehow you need to be able to pick, the, pick it up. So in the scenario, I couldn't pick up whether preference shares is debt or equity. But here in the part A, they're making it clear that for this, assume preference shares are redeemable and therefore categorized as debt. So remember, debentures, bonds, loans is always debt. Ordinary share is always equity. But preference shares could either be debt or equity. So I wasn't sure whether it was debt or whether it was equity because it wasn't clear from the scenario. But here they're telling us, assume it is categorized as a debt. Okay, so that's important because we need it for our ratios. So let's go back to, um, let's go back to our scenario, okay? So now I'm going to go over here. So we're gonna have your current capital structure. So for the current capital structure, we have um, 
source of finance. Okay, and then we have the weighting. Okay, so, sorry. Um, amount. Okay, so the source of finance is ordinary share capital. You don't have to put in this column. I'm just going to put it in for our, for our um, purposes. You don't have to put in this category column. Okay. So ordinary share capital, preference share capital. Um, what did I, say? I could not remember what was the other one? It was, it was long-term loan. Okay. If in B loan. Okay. So that is our current capital structure. So this is equity. This is debt, and that is debt. Okay, so um, so what's important to like, note over here is the following: the amount. So for ordinary share capital, we're only going to use five hundred thousand. We're not using the one million two hundred twenty. Why not? Because of the fact that we not we cannot include retained earnings. The preference share capital is currently on the balance sheet as 120. And then for if and be loan, it is 680. Okay, so that's important to take note. So now, um, so now we can work out the current capital structure. So the current capital structure, if we add up, so the weighting would be equal 500 divided by Okay, but now remember what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to, um, we need to work out debt versus equity. So the, it's, um, I'm gonna see how they set it out. They said debt equity, so we're gonna call it the same, debt equity. So debt equity, okay? So what you want to do is the following. Add up all the debt, that is why I put in the category. This is why I put in the category, so I know that is all my debt and my equity. It is only going to be the 500. Okay, so debt versus equity. Now, my current capital structure, what is it? So to get the current capital structure, we're going to say equity divided by debt plus equity. Okay, and similarly over here, for equity, it's going to be equity divided by debt plus equity. Okay, so it's basically um, each one has a percentage of each of the total finance. Okay, so just be aware of that. So as you can see, this is 60 is to 38. We need it to be 50 is to 50. One is to one is basically 50 is to 50. Okay, so just be aware of that. So now we're going to have to do something in order to get that balance right. So let's have a look how we're going to get this balance correct. So now with the new funding, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to, so now we're going to say current funding additional funding, and this will be the new capital structure. Okay, we're gonna to get to the new capital structure. So the current funding we already have over here as 1.3 million. 
the new funding that is what we are what we're trying to get which is the 800,000 so the the new capital structure would be the sum of the two so the new capital structure would be the sum of the two. So ideally, we need this to be one is to one. Ideally, we need this to be one is to one. So debt is to equity, one is to one. One is to one, okay? So just take note of that. So that is the, um, so this here is our target capital structure. Target capital structure. This is what it was given. Okay, so ideally we need it to be one is to one. I use the word ideally because that is what they, they would like to get to. It does not mean they're gonna get that. Okay, it depends on the funding available and on the cost of the funding. So this is gonna be our total. This is going to be total so now using the target capital structure we will say ideally what debt should, how much should debt be of 2.1 how much should equity be Okay, so over here, we will have the following. So we will say debt should equal one divided by the total, which is two multiplied by the new funding, the new capital structure. So debt ideally should be 1050. Similarly, equity must be, equity is portion of the capital structure divided by the total capital structure multiplied by the new capital structure, the new capital funding. Okay, so there you can see to um, the new funding, the new capital structure with the additional funding is 2.1. And when we split it between the target capital structure, we get 2.1 million. So now we can work out how we should fund. Now we can work out how we should fund. So if I have over here equity, and I have your debt. I know equity is currently sitting at whatever I had 500,000. Debt is currently sitting at 800,000. Um, what do I want it? So this is current target. The target is that for equity, it is 1050. For debt, it is also 1050. So now the question is, how should I fund? So here's the difference. Okay, so here's the difference. Add up to the 800. So here's the difference. So we will say um, what we need. Okay, so we need 550 from equity and we need 250 from debt. So now how are we going to fund this? We need 250,000 rand from debt and we need 550 from equity. So now we will say, how are we going to fund exactly? So how are we actually going to fund? So let's have a look at debt. So remember the debt available is preference share capital, is crypto bank, and it is FNB loan. So which of the finance are we gonna take from those three sources? So when I go over here, so to get that 250,000 Rand, I have these three sources. I have preference shares, I have um, crypto bank, and I have FNB loan. Remember, you need to take the full amount, okay? You can't take part of the amount. 
But more importantly, once you know how much of debt you need, okay, you need to choose the cheapest form of debt. Okay, so I'm gonna do this separately on, on the side, which you don't, you don't have to put this in your answer. So I'm just gonna draw a line over here. So you know this is just additional for you. So when you make your decision, how to think. So for preference shares, we have crypto bank. Preference shares, we have crypto bank and we have FNB loan. Okay. So the cost of preference shares So the, the cost of debt preference shares is 15%, they told us. Crypto bank, let's go have a look at crypto bank. So for crypto bank, they told us it is prime plus 800 basis points, okay? So 800 basis points to so get into percentage, you just, you just divide by 100. So 800 divided by 100, gives you 8%, okay? So prime is 10.5. Here they said prime is 10.5. So for crypto bank, it is equal to prime 10.5% plus 8%, okay? So as you can see, it currently looks at 18.5, and then if in B, is it the same as its existing loan? The existing loan is at 16.67. Okay, so it's 16.67. Okay, um, so if I go back, it is equal to 16.67%. Okay, the amount of finance available. Finance available. So, the amount of finance available is 50,000. This is just extra, you don't do this in the exam, okay? The amount of finance available is 200,000. And then for, um, for, for preference shares, it is, let's just have a look. They tell us for preference shares, a maximum of, 4,000 additional shares um, of preference shares can be issued. So a maximum, right? Doesn't mean you have to do all 400. Um, so the, the maximum we can get is 4,000 times 100 Rand per share. So we can get 400,000. Okay, so remember, um, you must, so for the loans, for these two, you must take the full amount. Okay, so if you choose crypto, you must take 200. If you choose F and B, you must take 50. But for preference shares, you can just issue what you need. Okay, so just take note of that. So, so let's say we go with preference shares. We just have to issue um, wh whatever amount that will give us. So 2,500 shares, we can issue to get to 250. But the question is, how do you decide between which of these you're going to choose? So when it comes to debt finance, when it comes to debt finance, you choose based on the cheapest cost. So you choose based on the cheapest cost. You know, on, on a CTA level, um, you must be more careful also because one can be at um, compounded monthly, the other one can be compounded quarterly and so forth. So that changes the cost. So then to make it comparable, you need to use an effective interest rate. For our purposes, ours will always just be per annum, so it's straightforward. So you choose the one or the cheapest cost. So as you can see, it appears that preference shares is cheaper. It appears that crypto bank is the most expensive and FNB is the second. But here's the important aspect. What you must know that with loan, with the debt, remember preference shares, although it's classified as debt, it's still from a SARS point of view, considered to be equity. So when it comes to debt from a SARS perspective, there's a tax deduction. So what's important to take note, we need to take tax into account. So we need to multiply by 0 0.72.
So as you can see, automatically it is cheaper. Multiply by 0 0.72. And as you can see now, how are you going to select if it be and crypto because it is cheaper than preference shares. If you did not take tax into account, then it would appear that preference shares is cheaper than crypto and FNB. So that was an important concept to pick up. Okay, so here we will say debt is funded through FNB and crypto because um, because it is the cheapest source of finance. Cheapest source of cheapest cost of finance from the three options. Okay. So it will first be FNB, 50,000. And then it will be, and then it will be crypto. It will be, what is that? Um, what was that? 200,000. And you can see it equals to what you call it because of, um, so it equals, to, you have to choose the full amount, okay? So that's why they probably made it like that. But some people have cho would have chosen preference shares because it appears preference shares is cheaper, okay? Um, you, you probably want to put this also in the answer, just this part over here, okay? You want to show it somewhere in the answer to show them that you don't have to tell them, you don't have to show it exactly like this, but you can say, if in B, and about FNB, why? Because it's cheaper. It is 12 and 13.2% compared to preference shares of 15%. Okay, so you want to somehow mention, you can't just tell them it's cheapest because what does it mean? Okay, so let's actually just put it over here 12% and crypto 13.2%. Okay. because it is the cheapest cost of finance compared with preference shares of 15%. Okay, so there's gonna be marks for that. So you don't have to go through this whole process over here, but this was just to show you the thinking, but that would be the answer. Now for um, equity, equity will be funded through an issue of new shares. Okay, but now we need to work out how many shares. So remember, funding required. Funding required, we calculated it was 550. Okay, um, share price. So I have a look over here. They told us in point number one, I mean, point number two, the market price of ordinary shares is currently 12 Rand per share. New shares will have no effect on these prices, although ordinary share issue costs will be 4% per share issued. Okay, so that's important to take note. So um, share price. Okay, so the share price would equal 12 Rand. So the share price would equal 12 Rand. So that's important to take note. But remember with a new issue, there's gonna be a share issue cost of four of, of four percent. So although you um to, if 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 I um if you are selling a share to me, right? I'm gonna pay you 12 Rand for the share, but you're not gonna get 12 Rand because four percent of the 12 Rand will go to the broker for share issue costs. So ultimately, what do you get? You get 12%, 12 Rand minus 4%. So basically, you're going to get 96% of the 12 Rand. So I'm going to say multiply by 96%. So 
So you only gonna get in cash 1152. So to get the full 550, you need to not work out based on 12 Rand, but you need to work out based on net of costs. So therefore the number of shares that you will have to issue would be, So the number of shares that you will have to issue will be um, number of shares to be issued would have to be equal to 550 divided by 11 Rand 52. Okay, so you're gonna have to issue that amount of shares. But as you can see, you can't issue 0 0.06 of a share. So therefore it will have to be 47, 7, 4, 4. Okay, so they have to be 47, 4, 4. Okay, so that's important to take note. Okay, because you can't issue 0 0.06 of a share, you have to issue a full share. So you're going to have to issue 47, 7, 4, 4. You have to round up, not round down. Because if you have 43, you're not going to have 550. You need 0.6 to get to the 550. So therefore, but you can't issue 0.6, so you will issue an, um, a full one. So you have to issue 47,744, okay? Very important, you don't apply normal rounding. When you apply rounding in financial management and in management accounting, in cost accounting, then you must always think about um, it logically, okay? So basically that would be the answer. So you need 550, you need 250, but how are you going to fund 800? So the 800 is funded 250 that way, and then 550 that way. Okay, so that is basically how you would fund. Okay, so that is basically that. I just want to do one more thing over here, and that is to just go back to WAC. So over here in WAC, okay, so I'm not going to change this question, but basically, I just want to show you in part A how WAC would be impacted. Okay, so WAC would be impacted as follows. So you can do this, you can do this WAC question um, as a practice, but remember that the, 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 the process of doing the WAC it remains the same. But what is going to change, it is going, this is going to change over here. Remember I told you when I do, did the WAC question, I ignored um, what they said. Here yeah, they told us, in the WAC question, they told us, calculate the weighted average cost of capital based on market values after financing of the new project. I did the WAC calculation before the financing of the new project. So it's going to change because I never took into account um, the, 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 the new project. But now I'm gonna take in the, into account the new project. And then what I want you to do is actually complete the WAC calculation, okay, and see if there's any difference. So if I just do this over here, if I just take this over here. So, so the WAC calculation would change as follows, okay? So um, you're obviously going to have to, I'm gonna put in the new book values, okay? So firstly, ordinary share capital is still there. Preference share capital is still there. f &B loan is still there. But remember, we're gonna have now crypto bank as well, okay? Because after the financing, we, took out a loan from crypto bank. Now the ordinary shares, if you have a look at part B over here, ordinary share capital was only 625. But remember, it's gonna to have to be 625 plus the, um, it's gonna to have to be 625 plus the new issue. Okay, so it's gonna to have to be 625, number of shares, plus the new issue of shares of 47, whatever that is, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, preference share capital, there was no change in preference share capital. The FNB loan is no longer 680. The FNB loan is 680 plus 
um, plus what now? Plus 50. Okay, and then crypto bank is going to be the 200,000. We're talking out the loan. I didn't know if this is the market value. Let me just go check if it is the market value. I guess you can assume that it is the market value because they're not telling you whether it's not or whether it is or it's not. So if we can assume that this is now the 200,000, okay? For the, um, for, the, for the ordinary share capital, it is simply going to be what we had in part B, what we had in part B, the 7.5 plus it's going to be the 550. Okay, because remember we issued new shares to the value of 550, the ordinary, this will remain the same. Okay, so you can just basically go see if you can complete this and then send it to me, then I can have a look or you, or you can just message me to see if it is okay or not. Okay, so just be aware in part B, this is not the right answer. This answer is not right relative to what they asked us. Why is it not right? Because the question said, please complete WAC after taking into account the new finance. I did it before taking into account the new finance. Why did I do that? It is because we never did the source of finance yet. We're only doing source of finance now. So now I'm showing you how it would have impacted the WAC calculation is that in the first one, we only had those three. Now we also bring in crypto bank. Crypto bank will be at 200,000. FNB loan will be at an extra 50,000. And an ordinary share capital would be the original answer plus the 550, because that is what we have issued now. Okay, so just be aware of that. So then um, you, the market values will still remain the same. And then you can just work out the new WAC amount. Okay. Is there any questions from your guys' side? Bungani, St. Clair, Talita, Dain, Nonku, Sunny Lisway, Ara Tazin, Sunny Lisiway. Anyone have any questions? Hey, hello. Yes. Uh, the new, the number of shares, the new issue is saying the new one is 550. Yes. The value, and the number of shares, that is the value, the amount of money you are raising. Oh, this is the amount of money. Yes. So the, the number of shares is 47,000. Yes. The value is 550, okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Organi? I know on my side, um, Five. okay. Send clear. I'm good, thanks. Okay, Talita. All good, Dane. Yes, I'm all good, thanks. Okay, so please practice this because if it does come out, that's easy marks. Okay, this is, this is actually easy marks, they're 12 marks, easy. It's kind of the same. You just need to uh, apply a little bit of thinking, so practice it, and then um, make sure. So the difficult part, or it's not not difficult. I'm saying difficult because that's the only challenging part. Is um, once you have identified the capital, the, um, how you need to fund the 800. So for example, we identified debt needed to be 250, equity needed to be 550. Is to make sure that you're choosing the right debt. And, and then making sure you're choosing the right the amount of number of shares. Okay, so they want to see that. It's not really relevant, but they still want to see that you're doing the correct calculation in knowing how many shares you need to issue. Faiz? Um, yes. Uh, with uh, preference shares, yes. why we did not, when we're checking which one is cheaper, which yes. date is cheaper? Why did you use 15%, not the, the required oh, yeah. rate of return, 11%? Oh, 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 why? So, oh, okay, that's a good question. So remember, 
um, the required rate of return is what shareholders expect. However, when if we're going to issue shares, if we're going to issue shares, the contract of the shares is going to say we're going to issue it at fifteen percent. So the same like it's the same like you going to the want to buy you a car or a house, and you um, enter into a loan agreement with a bank. The bank does not care what the market rate is. What the bank cares about is what they agreed with you, how much you need to pay them. Okay, so this is basically this is what you agreeing with the the preference shareholders, how much you're going to pay them. So every year, you're going to pay them a dividend of 15%. Uh, they don't care about the 11% because you're not going to pay them 11%. What this 11% is, what they expect, but that you're not going to pay them 11%. You are paying them 15%. And that is how you look at the, from, from that perspective, what is the cost that you're going to be paying? And you don't look at it from the market related rate. Okay. Because the actual cash flow is based on what you agreed with the, the, the investor. Okay. How that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Okay. Any other any other questions? If you guys are good to go, um, and I'll end the class over here. Thank you. That was very helpful. Very pleasure. Glad it was beneficial. Okay, bye bye. 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 Bye bye.